Coming up on tonight's broadcast, an insight into ASOSU presidential campaign, a free pass to the Corvallis Country Club, a change at the post office, and of course we will have a look at your five-day forecast and a look at sports. All that and more right here on the Beaver News. Welcome to the Beaver News. I hope everyone has been... Welcome to your Thursday night Beaver News. I hope everyone has been enjoying their day so far. I'm Andy Clark. And I'm Emily Shute. Oregon State professor George Estrich was awarded the Oregon Book Award for Creative Nonfiction on Tuesday this week. Estrich won the award for his memoir, The Shape of the Eye, Down Syndrome, Family, and the Stories We Inherit. In the book, Estrich focuses on the first year of his daughter's life after she is diagnosed with autism. Majori Sander, the director of OSU's Master of Fine Arts program in writing was also nominated for her book, The Late Interiors, A Life Under Construction. Glenn Anthony May and Brian Doyles, two members of the OSU press, were also nominated. Do you have an interest in learning how to shoot a gun? Or maybe you just want to practice your skills? Well, you are in luck because the Pistol Club will be at the indoor target range this Sunday, which will be open at 6 for beginners and 7 for members that have already been trained by the club. If it is your first visit to Pistol Club this academic year, then they ask that you bring $5 for the mandatory orientation and safety training and your OSU ID. For more information about the Pistol Club or the event, please contact the Department of Recreational Sports. I think the Pistol Club is a great example of the many different organizations OSU has to offer. Exactly. If guns aren't your thing, then there are plenty of other opportunities for you ways for you to get involved on campus. Oregon State's Socratic Club will be sponsoring a debate on the topic, Is Christianity Anti-Science? in the LaSalle Stewart Center on May 7th at 7 p.m. The event, which is open and free to the public, will feature Andrew Carlplus, a professor of biophysics and biochemistry at Oregon State, arguing Christianity supports science against Victor Stenger, a professor at the University of Hawaii and the University of Colorado. Both professors will delve into the cases of Galileo's condemnation and the opposition to Darwin perpetrated by the church. Carl Plus has been at OSU since 1998 and has peer-reviewed more than 100 different articles and received several awards during his research during his time. If you are a gardener at heart or want to learn how to use your own green thumb, then check out the 17th Annual Spring Garden Fair on Saturday from 9 to 3 in the afternoon at St. Helens High School. Master Gardeners will offer more than 5,000 plants from 30 different varieties of standard heirloom tomatoes at $1.50 per plant. There will also be certified members on hand to provide general gardening information and tomato-specific information as well as local vendors offering several garden-related items in the hourly raffle. Both admission and parking are free, so make it a day trip and head to the garden fair. Oregon State and other collaborating researchers have unveiled new maps of the seafloor off Oregon. After two years of intense work and digital cartography, the maps were released, providing new data for fishing industries, scientists, and marine spatial planners. In them, new, previously uncharted reefs and other features are mapped. This information will help predict how a tsunami grows as it comes to shore and is vital in the future of wave energy. Some of the research conducted was done aboard the Oregon State ship, the Pacific Storm, operated by members of the university's Marine Mammal Institute. If you are interested in learning more about the healthcare system and reform, then check out the Majestic Theater in Corvallis on Saturday at noon. There, speakers Arnold Realm and Marsha Angel from Harvard Medical School will talk about the subject of healthcare reform. Both speakers have delivered several books and lectures on the topic. The event is partially sponsored by Oregon State University's program in medical humanities, and those who are interested in attending the lecture should contact Courtney Campbell at the School of History, Philosophy, and Religion religion for more information. The Environmental Protection Agency has awarded OSU $90,000 as a part of its People, Prosperity, and the Planet competition. 300 different college teams submitted projects designed to protect the environment while encouraging economic growth and using natural resources efficiently. Oregon State was one of 15 schools to win the award given out on Wednesday. OSU's project worked on raising awareness of the pollution associated with the use of plastic mulch by farmers and testing biodegradable mulch material. Schools are encouraged to use the money to continue to develop or commercialize their projects. 
If you are interested in learning Heart Saver First Aid as well as adult CPR, then sign up at Dixon for Sunday's all-day class which will teach all about ways you can save someone's life. The class will be held in the Upper Dixon classroom and the cost is $45 for students and rec sport members and $55 for the OSU community and general public. For more information about the class, then contact Recreation Services at Dixon. On Tuesday, we brought you an interview with ASOSU candidates for President and Vice President Amelia Harris and Dan Cushing. We now have a report from the other ticket, Drew Hatlin and Carly Oson. We go to reporter, reporter Hayden Wilcox for that story. Hayden? Uh, unite campus and bring back a sense of pride to OSU. I know ASOSU has been in the tabloids for all its faults and follies this year, but uh, I think that really just gives us an opportunity to really make ourselves known more personally with the students of Oregon State. Um, I think there's a great opportunity to like create a better tradition um, here on campus and really find a way to unite us as students here. Um, a really important part of our campaign platform and our philosophy as leaders is um, listening and active listening and going out and seeking um, students to see what they think would be um, a positive change on campus. Uh, I've seen quite a bit of room for improvement. There hasn't been as much communication with the students as I think is, is possible. Um, I think there's lots of room to outreach for, uh, for different changes on campus. And I think this last presidency, we saw a lot of that disconnect really grow and grow. So now we have a campus that's really divided. Uh, we, have, we have student groups that are felt, feeling like they're not supported by the rest of uh, the community. And really, if you think about it, we have a bunch of subdivisions within Oregon State. And I think that really there's a missed, um, missed opportunity to create that sense of unity and really bring those student organizations together. Oh no, students are really, really excited. And uh, it's, it's really nice to see that our excitement has been contagious on campus. The more people we talk to, uh, the, the wider it spreads. Uh, I've talked to students that were adamantly against ASOSU, everything we stood for, and the last thing that they were gonna do is vote and be heard in this election. And just from helping to amplify student voices, uh, it's really been nice to see that kind of culture and uh, that perspective change. I met a student outside of the library that uh, swore that he would never, never vote and never planned on it. And then after bringing up one of his ideas with, uh, with the campus safety, uh, he turned into an evangelist for us and said that he was going to vote and tell every single person that he knew uh, to vote. So it's been really exciting and really rewarding to see uh, just that, that kind of excitement that, that we've brought forth from our campaign and uh, to see it kind of spread across campus. It's, it's really been a, a fun experience. We don't need a perfect system, we need perfect participation. Vote. You get out and vote. Uh, the student government is nothing without students expressing their opinion and, and, and voting for the leaders that they think are fit for the position. We are back. Remember, voting in the ASOSU election ends tomorrow evening at 10. On May 14th, representatives from apparel and textile companies will come to Oregon State for a symposium on issues surrounding sustainable textiles. Designed to educate students in the community, the symposium is free and open to all. It will be held in the Austin Auditorium of the LaSalle Stewart Center from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and will feature seven presentations from West Coast-based textile and apparel companies. Two roundtable discussions will also be offered to give students and the community a chance to ask questions. The symposium is made possible by the OSU Department of Design and Human Environment and from a grant from the OSU Student Sustainability Initiative. We are now heading into our first quick break of the evening, but when we return, we will have a look at news around the nation as well as a weather update. Stay tuned, you won't want to miss it. Welcome back to KBVR News. If you have if you love a good bike ride, then register today for the fourth annual ride, the Heart of the Valley bike ride, put on by the OSU College of Veterinary Medicine. The event has three routes that wind through Corvallis and the Willamette Valley. The cost is $30, which includes lunch, stocked rest stops, medical support, and a t-shirt. All profits from the ride support funding for low-income pet owners and the Johnson Dental Clinic at the Boys and Girls Club of Corvallis. Experience Corvallis a new way this Saturday. 
A special concert featuring music that advocates action on behalf of social justice and the environment will be held on Friday, May 11th at the Corvallis High School Theater. The musical, This Land is Our Land, the musical of environmental and social change, is sponsored by the Oregon State Creek Project for Ideas, Nature, and the Written Word, and will feature well-known singer-songwriters Carrie Newcomer and Libby Roderick. Roderick is best known for her folk song, How Could Anyone?, which has been translated into numerous languages and was sung by Hillary Clinton and thousands of others at the UN conference in Beijing. Have you ever wanted to join the Corvallis Country Club but cannot afford to do so? Well, why not check it out for free this Saturday at their open house event from 3 to 5 in the afternoon. There will be complimentary appetizers and beverages, as well as a raffle with prizes. Also, make sure to check out the swim and golf programs, as well as many others that will be going on. So why not be a member for a day and check out the Corvallis Country Club? Parents of a missing six-year-old girl in Tucson are pleading for their daughter's safe return. Isabel Mercedes Solis was last seen on Friday evening going to sleep in her room. On Saturday morning, her bedroom was found empty and a screen from the window was removed. Police have raised the award for information that leads to a break in the case to $30,000, although according to the chief, they are still sorting through more than 300 leads. The area surrounding the girl's home has been methodically searched, according to police. It's been raining a little on and off today, but nothing some Oregon natives can't handle. But I know everyone is hoping for sunny weather. I know I wouldn't mind another sunny weekend. For a look at upcoming local weather, we're going to go to Spencer with the weather. Hello Corvallis, I'm Spencer Smallwood. Tonight I've been taking a look at the Doppler radar, so I'm going to bring you your five-day forecast. Tonight we have a low of 43 degrees with a 70% chance of rain. Friday, expect the sun to come out with some scattered rain showers with a high of 59 degrees and a low of 43 degrees at night. Saturday looks like we get more sun breaks with a high of 66 degrees and a low of 46 degrees at night. Sunday, even more sunshine for this beautiful weekend with a high of 66 degrees and a low of 45 degrees. And finally, on Monday, looks like we're back to some cloud cover with a high of 64 degrees and a low of 48 degrees. I'm Spencer Smallwood, and that was your five-day forecast. Back to you guys in the studio. Rain or shine, the U.S. Postal Service has been delivering mail six days a week, but that could soon be changing. The Senate, on Wednesday, passed a plan to save the struggling U.S. Postal Service, an effort that could have saved thousands of jobs and 100 mail processing plants, now slated to be closed or consolidated next month. The Senate voted 62 to 37 in favor of helping out the Postal Service, who without help would otherwise cut Saturday service as well as delay mail delivery. The bill forces the Postal Service to ease off part of its plan to slow down the delivery of first-class mail. It also makes some controversial changes, including cuts to workers' compensation benefits, as well as a transition from door-to-door -door delivery to curbside delivery in some areas. The House has yet to make up a different bill to reform the Postal Service. A New Jersey father has launched a website to publicize bullying by teachers in his son's classroom. CNN reports that the father placed a hidden recording device on his 10-year-old autistic son after the school reported the boy was acting out and hitting teachers. According to the father, the recording uncovered teachers talking about sex and alcohol in front of the class and yelling at his son to shut your mouth. Since the posting of the website on Monday, there have been disciplinary actions and the removal of at least one teacher. We are heading into our final break of the night, but don't go anywhere, because when we come back, we'll have a look at international and national news, as well as a look at sports. Welcome back to the Beaver News, live on KBVR. A day after U.S. lawmakers were briefed on an alleged prostitution scandal in Colombia involving Secret Service members, a report emerged of similar allegations in El Salvador. A CNN affiliate cited an unnamed U.S. government contractor who worked extensively with the Secret Service advance team in San Salvador prior to President Barack Obama's trip there in March 2011. The source said that he was about a dozen he was about with about a dozen Secret Service agents and a few U.S. military specialists at a strip club in the city. A few days before the president arrived, a total of nine Secret Service members have resigned or are being forced out as a result of the scandal in Colombia. While a separate military investigation has yet to announce any measures against U.S. Service members allegedly involved. 
Police in Baltimore have arrested a suspect in connection with the death of a 16-year-old North Carolina girl whose body was found in Maryland over a year ago. According to CNN, the man was arrested but was identified by Baltimore PD as Michael Johnson. No other information has been released yet. The girl, Felicia Barnes, was discovered last April 40 miles from where she was last seen in Baltimore. FBI and Baltimore police have been working on the Barnes case since her body was discovered late last year. A nun is set to appear in a Spanish court this month on an illegal baby adoption charge that could just be the tip of an iceberg. Sister Maria Gomez, a Catholic nun, is accused of snatching an infant from her birth mother and putting the child up for an illegal adoption in 1982. The elderly nun has become the face of what is known in Spain as niños robados, or stolen children. At least 2,000 official cases have been filed with Spanish prosecutors, but some believe there could be tens of thousands more, dating as far back as the 1950s and continuing as recently as the 1990s. As of right now, it seems that all of the cases were of individuals making money from misery rather than nationally coordinated network or organized crime gangs. But of all these cases, only Sister Maria Gomez has been named as a suspect. After her appearance in court, she issued a statement denying the allegations, saying they were deeply disgusting and that she has never known a single case of a newborn being taken from a mother through coercion or threats. Legally blind athlete Aaron Shadiz is suing three triathlon groups for making him and other visually impaired athletes wear blackout glasses. CNN reports that the glasses, which temporarily leave athletes sightless, is a part of a controversial effort to level the playing field. The rule forces partially blind runners to compete in totally blind groups. Shadai's lawyer maintains that it is illegal to force able-bodied runners to wear the blackout glasses. Previously, Shadai staged a protest with 30 other blind runners to bring attention to the rule. For more sports news, we go to Tyler Dahlgren. Tyler? Oregon State Athletics will host fan fest. Activities and events are free. FanFest begins with fanfare at Parker Plaza starting at 10 in the morning and will be followed by the always popular autograph session with the entire Beaver football team from 10 to 11 at the main concourse inside Research Stadium. The spring, game, the spring game will also serve as the final practice of the spring football season. Come and support your Beavers. Our women's softball team will be back in action when they take on the Utah Utes for its penultimate Pac-12 road series. The Beavers and Utes will face off for the first time as conference foes and, and the three game series will begin tomorrow with the first pitch slated for three in the afternoon. Tomorrow, men's soccer will host its annual alumni game and luncheon event. The festivities will take place at the new intramural fields between 30th and 26th streets north of Washington Way. Check-in begins at the pavilion at the IM fields at noon with the game set to start at one. In Pac-12 news, the University of Oregon's number one women's lacrosse team heads to Stanford tomorrow in search of their first tournament title. The number one seeded Ducks face off against number four California in first round action, starting at 4.30 in the afternoon. U of O was able to clinch the regular season title last Saturday when they snapped Denver's 12 game winning streak, winning 13 to eight. The win solidified Oregon as next year's host of the MPSF tournament that will take place at their new field. That's all the news we have for you tonight, but check back in with us on Monday at 7 p.m. right here on KVBR as we bring you the news that matters in your life. Have a great evening, everyone, and remember to vote.